When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Baker's, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Baker's worth it every time. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, is... Sesame Abuse is Bad in Carta. That's a good, concise name right there. Thanks. And, um, do you feel that name? Do you believe in that name? I do. Okay, that's good. Like, because abuse is bad. It is. Yes. I don't know about more than one abuse, but, but, but one... But abuse is definitely bad. Yeah. But several abuses, I'm not really sure about. Well, they're they're bad too. Oh, it's wait. Multiplication. Oh, you mean you mean like the word abuse? Oh, yeah. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I I got confused there for a second. Oh, that's fine. Because because yeah. I for a second I almost thought you said a Bruce, and then I was really confused because I was like thinking that you know maybe you just didn't like Bruce, you know Bruce Wayne or something. Bruce McCullough or... from or, or Bruce uh, Bruce Campbell or some other Bruce, you know. So yeah. 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 Or. Or my stepfather, Bruce. I hope you don't have issues with him because I, he's, he's. I great. don't have issues with them. No, <laughs> I only met him twice, but I don't have any issues. Yeah. With them. <laughs> hey. So today, um, before we get started, I just wanted to remind people to go check out all two real two dot com if you can. We've got a link to our Patreon there. That's a good way to uh, help out the show. We've got you know you can get different tiers that we have in there. You know. Not like tears, like where you're crying, <laughs> because that, I mean, if, if you want us to sell you our tears, we can. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll take the money for them. You know, yeah, I, I can make my I can make myself cry. Um, all I just got to do is think about the world, and then I'm crying in like five minutes. But uh, yeah, so, the yeah. Uh, yeah, but um, you know, we, we could do that. But um, we could have a tier of tears, and <laughs> um. But no, we do have like a legitimate, you know, tiers on there where you can be involved in our podcasts or our films and stuff like that of uh, Cullen Park Productions and uh, All Too Real 2 and our whole uh, cinematic uh, life and podcasting universe, you know. Also, we've got a T Public where you can buy some merchandise. We've got a... Uh, um, We've 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 got like uh, social media all over the place. You know, check that out. Um, also, uh, give us a five star review wherever you can give a review, or I will really cry, and then I'll make sure I get like a jar that I can catch <laughs> the tears. In. And um, you know, that would be good. Now to the topic at hand, which sometimes involves a backhand. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I won't dark. Well, no. so, <laughs> so today we're, we're covering another very special episode of Boy Meets World. This one is called Dangerous Secret, and it deals with uh, child abuse, basically. Um, the, uh, the short description on the Internet Movie Database says, Corey walks in on Sean to find that he has a girl staying at his trailer. When Sean needs Corey to allow Claire, that's the girl, to stay at his ho- house, he is forced to tell, tell Corey that Claire's father beats her. So, yeah. Yep. So basically, that's what happens. We've got this girl, Claire, that we never see before this episode and never see after. <laughs> like most uh, sitcoms where you just got these one-off characters that is like the central focus of an episode. Um, <clears throat> this episode was directed by Jeff. It's, it's called Dangerous Secret. It was originally aired on uh, November 8th of 1996. It was season four, episode eight. It was directed by Jeff McCracken and written by Jeff Sherman. 
Um, Boy Meets World stars uh, Ben Savage as Corey Matthews, William Daniels as George Feeney, Betsy Randall as Amy Matthews, Will Ferdell as Eric Matthews, Ryder Strong as Sean Hunter, Danielle Fischel as Topanga Lawrence, William Russ as Alan Matthews, and in this episode we had guest star Ariana Richards as Claire Ferguson, and uh, people may know her from the Tremors movies or um, from Jurassic Park, so... Yeah. Really? Or am I am I am I gonna make a touchdown here or a field goal? Was she also in the movie Angus? Was, was I do be- <clears throat> I do believe she was. Let me double check here. Um, the reason why I made yes, a football she was. Right. Okay. She, All right. she was Melissa Melissa Lefevre in Angus. Okay. Yes, That's that why was, I made a football was, reference. Because yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I need to I need to get that movie. I used to have it on VHS, but now I need to find a DVD. We should redo of that, that sometime. I haven't seen that movie in years. I'll have to buy it and see. Um, but yeah, she, she was in that and she's, uh, since retired from acting, I, I believe, uh, as of like 2013 was the last uh, movie she did prior to that. The last movie she had done was uh tremors three back to perfection. Um, wait, she was also in Prancer, right? Um, Prancer. I don't know. Let me see. Okay. Maybe that was someone else. Oh yeah. That was her. Okay. All right. She's got a very distinct look. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like, I, I can't yeah. explain it, but there's like, she had to look like anyone else. Like, yeah. She was in Space Invaders. Okay. Um, yeah. TV movie Switched at Birth. Okay. Um, one of those movies, all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And like Angus, like you said, she was in uh, Born Free, A New Adventure. Um, she's oh. she's uh, the teenager, I believe the teenager getting a, I don't know, I think she, is that, she was a teen, she was a teenager, at least in the Ben Folds 5 video for Brick. Okay. That's, that's the song about abortion. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if she was the main star of that. Now I now I'm now I'm curious about that. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. I'm like I've got you in a off. But also, was she in Born to Be Wild about the gorilla? I'm, I'm like I. It's, this is my era of movies. Okay, when I was like 12, 13. Like so, I'm like yeah, totally. I will I will look at her. Uh, I'm sorry. Her I'm like totally different. What, what was it called? Born to Be Wild. Born to Be Wild. It's about this kid who has like he like a gorilla yeah. like befriends him, I guess, and they go on like a road trip because they don't want to take him back to the zoo. I guess or something like that i do not see it on her on on her list yeah okay um i might just have missed it though but i don't i do not see it um yeah but uh yeah um yeah she plays the pregnant teen who has the abortion in um the music video for brick okay which is like the first like top 40 hit song about abortion i think so (laughs) that's crazy maybe not the first but it was definitely you know a, a, a song that people sang along with before they saw the music video and had no idea what the hell the song was about they're like you're like just a really cool song bro and stuff like that and uh uh no wait you also had the anti-abortion song for seals and crofts back in the 70s oh you know that's true yeah. and so um uh but i'm not sure if that was top 40 or not though good album really weird political commentary but really good alpha <laughs> yeah <laughs> No, they got, they, yeah. they got the King of Nothing on that song. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I love that song. Um, and the, sorry, I'm like totally derailing this episode. No, that, that, it, it's perfectly fine. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, that, that's what we have. We have hers, Claire Ferguson. Um, so what are your initial thoughts of this episode? It was pretty decent. Um, this, this is probably around the era when I first started watching Boy Meets World around 96, 95. So <clears throat> I think I kind of remember watching this when it came out. Uh, I think it did a pretty decent job of the... It's, yeah. it's a lot better than the cult episode when Sean joined the oh, cult for sure. for seconds, and then and they're in the same season. This one came first, and then the cult one came after. Wow! So they 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 didn't improve. They 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 went the opposite <laughs> way. Uh, well, I'm not I sure. Mean, Maybe the, it was filmed later. I don't know. But uh, the the cult one did have some good, you know, uh, scenes with like with like Mr. Matthews and stuff like that, and Feeney. But it was still. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I liked it. I, I thought it did a decent job of you know sticking to the theme of the show because I know a lot of a lot of these episodes that we've talked about, it's like the entire like entire entire vision of the show changes just for that one episode, and then it's kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, well, it does kind like, of with this. I mean, the tone the tone changes in this a little bit than some. Yeah, because with, with with Boy Meets World, you would have like a like like a really serious kind of episode one week, but then the next week, you know, you've got Eric being a weatherman or something, you know. So it's just kind of <laughs> weird. <laughs> so it's oh. like you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I I love Boy Meets World. It's like I think it's like one of my favorite sitcoms of all time for some reason. Pretty good. Um, yeah, 
And I've seen every episode probably about 30 times, and I'm not exaggerating by one bit. <laughs> I've memorized so many lines. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this, this it was, I, I think it was a decent episode. It's probably, in my opinion, the darkest episode, or at least one of the darkest episodes of like these very special episodes that I think is, was made around that time, at least in the 90s. So yeah, because it, it, it really covered the issue pretty well. I mean, we... We we did a previous episode of Full House where there was a you know a boy being abused and I I think this episode covered it a lot better in my opinion I mean, I than the Full so. House one covered it up much like you know the bruises gets covered up with makeup and stuff like that <laughs> yeah. sorry yes. I was not with a child that was so dark <laughs> I was just trying to be sarcastic but like uh... mm-hmm. it's okay I started out the episode making making jokes about the word abuse so I know. It's well, like... yeah is this a, a single or plural <laughs> um i know we're, we're such great kids <laughs> <advocates. laughs> yes um i will try to um include something about abuse in our show notes for people if they sure. need help uh just letting you know um may do a uh i don't know something up front if you guys haven't heard it already i might have a warning about it but if not just letting you know what we're getting into i'll just do it now you know basically we're getting into abuse here in this episode, so yeah. if that's a trigger, you know, come back next week or go back and listen to an old episode. You know, <laughs> check out our check out our review of the Tooth Fairy Two. That'll be a good. <laughs> um, unless oh, you have something about teeth, unless teeth trigger trigger you, then you might not want to. Um, well, then, then but... you want to then you want to then uh, <laughs> do a kindergarten cop to or something. Like... Yeah, or something else. Yeah, <laughs> that's just a deep cut. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Do honey, we shrunk ourselves. Well, that actually has some issues too that we talk about. So, anyways, <laughs> yeah, um... <laughs> one of the actors, <laughs> yeah, that has some cult issues. But, anyways, so yeah. <laughs> you've been warned, folks. So, um, <laughs> just don't listen to any of our episodes. <laughs> so, 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 just skip this week and uh, don't listen, listen to behind, to podcast. Listen to behind the bastards. No, I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a podcast that's better than this uh listen to uh <laughs> yeah any, anyone else <laughs> no i don't want to say that because they might start listening to like you know tim pool or something oh um, right yeah, exactly. <laughs> joe rogan um anywho um this uh what goes down here in this episode to start uh, <clears throat> well Corey, he's um dropping up a bunch of stuff to sean's uh, trailer because his parents are away for the week or something and he, like groceries and like um, yeah and he, he thinks Sean is sick yeah so he's, yeah. He, he brought like a bunch of like cough medicine and like flowers because at one point he's like oh I, you forgot to bring me flowers and then he's like no actually I, I did but I, I thought it might be inappropriate or something like that <laughs> like it is. <laughs> it's like yeah, it is, but that's okay. <clears throat> and then, um, and, and, and honestly, I think with this, this is kind of like one of those first moments. Like, if 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 you're a longtime fan of Boy Meets World, you uh watch throughout the show, and this is one of those first like uh signs of most people think that Corey and Topanga is the love story of Boy Meets World, but it's not. The love story is Corey and Sean. <laughs> so. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, because they're, they're, yeah, the way they they're, interact. Their romance is the heart of the show, in my opinion. So, yeah. No, it, it is. I mean, like, the way they interact with each other is, is so much more natural than Gory and Topanga. It's, it's like every time yeah. I see them together, I just feel really awkward. And, and like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It just, I, I never, I never I mean, felt if, much if, chemistry. Eventually, Eventually, Corey and Topanga get better, but the fact that throughout the show, their their history changed so many times. Like they they were, they've been together since they were in diapers. No, before it was like since they were five, and then oh, at other other time it was when they were twelve. You know, it's just like what? The fuck? Like yeah, make up your mind and yeah. And I, <clears throat> Yeah, so like, yeah, he's kind of like a he, he's kind of like the the JD to Turk and and Sean is yeah. Turk and Corey's kind of like the JD kind of yeah, That's kind of like their dynamic. A yeah, little he's, bit. he's Corey's definitely the sensei. As, yes, uh, yes, as JD. yes, yes, yeah. exactly. And then uh, and so he's got like, he's gonna go like, oh, don't worry, I'll just go plug in the uh, the humidifier. And then Sean's like, don't go in there or whatever. And then that's when um Claire walks out and she's wearing like like a robe or something like that. So yeah. It, it, or- and, and the thing is, the robe she's wearing, We've, if you're a fan of the show, which I mean, because I am and I, I'm really going to point out these little obsessive things. <laughs> it's 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 a bathrobe that we have seen Sean wear in previous episodes. OK, so we know it's, it's we know that it's Sean's bathrobe. So it kind of implies something that didn't really happen. But 
you know, so. Yeah, and so Corey thinks that they hooked up, and so he walks out kind of like, you know, feeling embarrassed, and Sean's like, hey, you know, it's not what you think, and then Corey's like, it's okay, man, like, you should have, you know, <clears throat> told me you didn't want anyone to come over, or whatever, you know, it's fine, and he's like, he's like, please, just just trust me on this one, okay, it's not, it's not what you think, but I really can't tell you, you know, what's going on, so just, just keep this a secret, and he's like, fine, then he ends up going, uh, blabbing about it, I think, God, who he tells um uh, he tells he tells Topanga. That's right, he tells Topanga about it. But, but but basically the reason he tells her is because he's thinking that, you know, oh, you know, he, he goes and tries to basically have sex with Topanga. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that mm-hmm. part of the story. Almost almost trying to force himself on her, but it's like, okay, but he yeah. I don't know about that. He just was acting really not, weird. Not quite, like that not quite that far and i don't think he would have because Corey's not that type of guy so yeah but but he he's feeling like uh he's feeling less than his friend because he thinks his friend has you know done it and he hasn't you know so yeah okay now i'm yeah now i'm remembering the candles and, and the grapes and all that weird shit <laughs> yeah, and, and, and his and his cd changer which isn't really a changer it's just a cd player i know he kept making a big deal about his cd changer it's got yeah but it's CD- just had, it had one disc. Yeah, it was the CD. It was just a CD player, Corey. A changer. Yeah, and, and yeah, fly. I, I had a CD. I had a CD changer when I was a kid. It was it, too. It was fun. It had, you could play like five or six CDs in it. Mine was like you know. I then I. I thought I was really cool, and then I went over to a friend's house, and they had like a hundred CD changer. And like, I'm like, God damn it! And like, <laughs> yeah, I used to do. I and used to mess with mine. Now we have all those songs in our pocket. Yeah. <laughs> I remember mine, you could make an actual playlist. And so like I would hey, always wow. like I would always like <clears throat> overdo it though by like, oh, I want track one from this C D and then I want to play track four from the next C D and like just just do it just because I could. And you like but like it wasn't like seamless because you like you would have to wait for each like C D to get in the right position, you know, it's for the yeah the player to read it. So it wasn't like it wasn't like you're getting like a great playlist like you would from like a DJ show or you know, like a wedding or something like that you know but but yeah they were pretty cool i got i got one from my high school graduation gift okay, that was pretty cool we we used to have a there was a uh cd changer in a car i used to own and uh it was like five five or six discs in there and but the changer was in the trunk oh okay which was really weird to me and then on top of that at one point the the little little uh mechanism that you put the discs in the door wouldn't open on it oh no finally got it open eventually but for the longest time we had five discs in there and that was all we could listen to oh god like 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 and and like one of them was like an audio book and then there was like <laughs> just like but it was only like it was only like the third disc of the audiobook or something stupid like that. Oh yeah, it's like you can't even like listen to it from the beginning. Like Yeah. God. It was so annoying. But yeah. Oh good good technology of the days. Um anyways, uh so you know, like like I was saying there though, we got we got a uh, you know, Corey trying to be all romantic and trying to trying to get, get to a, a further base, as he's saying, with uh, Topanga, you know. So and uh and realizing like the errors of his ways, he like he ends up kicking himself out of his own room. Yeah. Yeah, like that. He's like, I like, no, like I'm you. You stay. I'll leave. I'm I'm the one that like screwed this up or whatever. You know. Yeah. That was kind of and 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 they and they had some funny parts of it too because he was going to play some romantic music and it was uh, some kind of like Barney type music and um yeah it, it yeah. was that and he threw that outside but then there was also like a Volvo audio manual for like his mom's car yeah because like <laughs> it's, it's like, like rem- yeah they're like listening to nice classical music and then like a, it goes into like the narration of the Volvo or whatever. Like, did you, were you were you at that uh that that one um th- there was a uh it was like a meditation devotional type thing that uh I ran one time and yeah. uh, set up set up music for it and I did not realize that there were like dialogue from the movie Leaving Las Vegas in the middle of the music. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember that was just like it was like just like a cut from the movie itself, I guess, or something. Yeah, because like... I, I had the soundtrack. I had the soundtrack, and I really liked the song. I just hadn't listened to this song all the way through yet. So I didn't know that in the middle of it, you had uh, you had Elizabeth Shue and uh, Nicolas Cage fighting with each other in the middle of the song. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> it was so was embarrassed. Like, okay, there's, there's dialogue here, right? whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> when, when, when I was watching this, it reminded me of that. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. So like you ruined the moment. God damn it. It's like 
everybody's sitting there praying and meditating, and all of a sudden, Nicolas Cage is yelling at Elizabeth Shue, and you're like, okay. I'm such an a-hole. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so... So basically, then the then we have the next day at school. Uh, Corey's having some issues with Topanga because you know they're not getting along after what he tried to do the night before. <laughs> and uh, Mister Mister Feeney asks Corey how he can help the situation. After Corey asks him for some advice, uh, he says that you know you got to keep the lines of communication open. And so he tries, and you know she uh, she doesn't want to. She's not having it right no. yet. You know she's still no. trying to deal with things. So then. Uh, Sean comes by and he mentions to Sean that he told Topanga about Claire staying the night. Mm -hmm. And of course, Sean gets all pissy. Man, he, he broke, he betrayed his trust. Corey yeah. betrayed his trust. Yes. And you know what? When trust is broken after words are spoken, something that rhymes with spoken. Yeah. That was my new poem. You like it? It's pretty decent. No, when trust is broken <laughs> and words are spoken, six hours later, you're going to crawl through your best friend's window and ask to unlock your door so that Claire could stay at your house instead of at Sean's. That's not really That doesn't rhyme. rhyme. Doesn't I was going to say, that doesn't rhyme. rhyme. <laughs> that's fine, though. And, uh, <laughs> so, that's just one form more, of poetry. More, more free-form poetry here yeah. we got going yeah. on. It's yeah, freestyle. And, uh, and so, yeah, so then Sean's like, hey, my parents are back from wherever they were, which is weird. What were they doing away? Like, what, what, like where were they gone for the whole week? Like, This is at the point where, uh, like, the parents had just gotten back together, I think, in the series. So it was oh, like, okay. kind of weird. I don't know. It was it was just because uh, <clears throat> Verna had been missing for like a year. Oh, I see. His 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 his, his uh, thought to be mom. Yeah. Years it's later in the series, it's revealed that Verna is not really his biological mother. <laughs> Oh, I see. Doesn't Sean have an older brother? No. Later on, he does. He, he later on, he has Jack come into okay. the picture, and that's from that's from that's Chet's son from a previous relationship prior to Verna. Okay. But then, but then also there was a relationship before Verna that actually gave him Sean too. So it's like <laughs> that's that's a very confusing timeline. Uh, and and then then there was another half brother in an episode that we only saw in one episode and never saw again. Who lived okay. at the trailer park? Yeah. It's more like and they, boy... they, they ne and they never mention it again and yeah it's one of those things and, and they, they, they jump they jump uh grades in the show too like a little oh, the, like uh, <laughs> you know it's like a different thing come on guys there's, like there's, there's, no, there. there's no continuity in the show you didn't think they, they, come on guys i mean morgan gets replaced by a different actress but that happens in a lot of shows but still you know so. true that's that's not abnormal they should change the show yeah. to boy meets multiverse because i mean there's yeah. so many different timelines going on continue i can't think of the word god damn it but uh I, i'm at that <laughs> god damn it i'm at that age where like like i can't find the exact perfect word i'm looking for i can find a replacement word but it's not the one i want to use you know <laughs> yeah uh, um were you thinking oh, a continuum or and that's what I think it was uh, some kind of continuum. That's not even the word. It doesn't matter. Who cares? Uh, yeah. So like it was. Just, it was a dumb joke. I was just trying to make is a funny throwaway line. It didn't really. I, work. I, I think our fans will forgive you. Sh sure. Let's let's hope for that. And um, <laughs> so Claire stays the night. <laughs> We're getting so off track. Uh, uh, yeah. Claire stays the night at Quarry's. Yeah. She's got. A, a bruise that she's hiding, but then <clears throat> under her coat. But then Corey's like. And like Corey's being like, you know, a good host. So he's like, oh, let uh -huh. me take take your coat. And she's like, no, it's fine. And then he ends up grabbing it away. And then she sees all these all these bruises on her arm. And she's like, oh, I'm such a klutz. So I ran into, which is weird because Corey says something to like, yeah, I ran into a door. And I'm like, wait a minute, isn't that the exact line from the full house? I ran into a door named Dad or something like that. Or yeah, no, he, he said he said I, I've ran into a door about ten times. So yeah. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, and then, yeah. <laughs> and then in the Full House episode, that's what um whatever it was a name. door named Dad. Yeah, yeah, door named Dad. Which I always wanted to make a band with that name when I was younger, but I figured even back then it's probably too intense. You know, you know. <laughs> well, if you never explain what it means. <laughs> It might not mean anything. Yeah, it might just be like that's weird, you know. Why you I just I just had this door this door that I really relate to that I consider my father. Um <laughs> Yeah, this guy just named his door and he named it Dan for some reason. <laughs> why not? You know, why not? Yeah. <laughs> then, uh, but it does kind of bring up problems though, because like when you say like you open a door, does it mean you open your dad? Like you just like just tear off his <laughs> body or whatever. Like you know? 
<laughs> Sorry, that was weird. Uh, then there's other issues completely. It's like, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, she's I mean, like, you, I mean, it, it does bring me really, you know, more meaning to like, you know, I, I really just wish my dad would open up. Um, <laughs> exactly. There's a, it's a whole, we can, <laughs> yeah. we can find a whole slew of meaning from all this very deep, deep subject matter um, that we're apparently making into a joke, which is not a joke. It's not a joke. <laughs> Uh, it's, yeah. it's a very serious topic here. Yes, we're, yes. I'm sorry. Um, I'm a little bit loopy here. It's Memorial Day when we're recording. It's uh, okay. And my niece just randomly yelling for some reason right now. Okay, whatever. Fine. And um, she'll be all right. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> no, she's fine. And um, don't worry. I was going to say, when we're talking about people being hurt and your niece is just randomly yelling. <laughs> If she starts screaming, oh, I've got to come out and check out her and see if No, there's other people there's other people here, okay? It's, she's not left alone. But <laughs> Yeah, I'm not just like letting your fend for herself or anything like that. Yeah. I'm not I'm not that bad of a person, okay. But uh no, so um she's like, Yeah, can I get a glass of milk or whatever? And he's like, Yeah, sure. And so he uh <clears throat> Well, that was, she kind of said that to deflect because he was going to launch into some kind of, yeah. Like, oh, and, and should... first, they, 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 they saw the, the, there was an important part too, that right before that though, he, they, she points out the, the picture of the family above the mantle. Um, and, uh, you know, so they look nice, you know, and stuff like that. So that's important later, but yeah. Oh yeah, it is. It's like, yeah, they are nice people. And then, and then he's like, yeah, you know, I know it's not my place to tell you what to do or whatever. And she's like, and she's like, actually, can I get a glass of milk? And he's like, yeah, sure. And so he gets the milk and she's already sleeping. Sleeping, which I, I always hate them TV shows. No one goes to sleep within 20 seconds of laying down. Like, come on. I don't know. Man. Some people do. I, maybe, but I... Uh... <laughs> I just, I just can't relate to it. I don't know. Like, especially if you've already been yeah. up. I mean, I, I, I know like when my niece was a baby, that would happen. Or when she was really young, not like, sure. you know, not like a major, but still, you know. And there, there, there have been times where I just like my head hits the pillow and I fall asleep. But that it's been like about 20 years since that happened. But yeah, still, um, well, there since, you go. Since, yeah. I started to care more, since I started to care more about the world and, you know, the dangers of the world keep me up at night. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, much like a, like a, much like a dangerous secret would, um, keep you up at night. Yes. You see what I did there? <clears throat> I see that, and that that, I, that is good. I think I think people should join our Patreon just for that. I said that to hit your line or whatever you call it. Um, yes. Well, what's the phrase? To titular or titular? Titular, I think. Yeah. I said the titular. There's there's a sketch from uh, an old TV show where they have a whole thing about that. It's funny, and yeah. um, I can't think of the show right now. God damn it! Why can I not think of these shows or these words? Um, I think I'm getting dementia it's just, early. It's because we're all getting old. Yeah, it happens. It was you, you needed to take that, you needed to take that part out of your brain so you could remember that that like that uh like Grubhub delivers more than just food. Yeah, I guess. Um, sure, they do deliver. At, at least that's the, what the commercials tell me. Is a Grubhub one of those or, or Uber Fuck Eats or one of those? There was shit about these I dumb. Fuck them. They're all stupid, but but I know Fuck. there's some commercials with like Jennifer Aniston and stuff. Um, anyway, so yeah, so she falls asleep and then <clears throat> talks to Sean about it, I guess, or something. I don't know. And I said, well, this is the B plot is Mr. Feeney is weirdly trying to like. We already did that one. Never mind. God damn it. Yeah, he, he's <laughs> no. trying to give him good advice. Feeney's not really in this episode much. Not really. Um, yeah, but basically, th there is a part where um, before before that before uh, before Claire stayed the night, Corey had a had a had a man to man with uh his brother mm -hmm. um with Sean I mean Eric not Sean with Eric about Sean and um you know basically uh he said he, he said uh Sean uh Sean, Sean is uh is, is uh is running the bases and you're just still up in the stands chucking peanuts you know so uh, yeah yeah which was a yep. good line actually I think so <laughs> yeah like, I don't even bad. have any be good yeah um um the uh but yeah but then he tells him a story about how when he was a kid and there was this guy Mitchell Davis who uh who who uh basically had um had to always up one up him and he had a uh, um Eric had like a really cool bike and Mitchell bought the same bike but the thing is that Mitchell's didn't have training wheels on it so you know and, <laughs> and then yeah so he yeah. was basically trying to say that you know sex is like a bike without training wheels you do it before you're ready and you're gonna fall and break your head is what he said so <laughs> sure yeah which was actually kind of good advice. It is. I like it. I like it on the show when there's a lot of episodes of the show where, where at least early on, where Eric was like kind of a jerk to Corey. But I kind of like it when he's like he's still kind of slightly older brother brother jerky, but he's like nice to him and gives him good advice. So, yeah, 
That's always good. You know, <clears throat> and plus, too, we learn later on that Corey and Topanga are like only like only like fifteen years old. I mean, it's a little yeah. bit early, a little bit early to be <clears throat> experimenting with that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it is that thing, you know, like when you're in when you're in high school. I mean, I remember like when some of my buddies had girlfriends and I didn't, and I was kind of jealous, and you know, or mm-hmm. or whatever or they were having sex or whatever and i wasn't i don't know if i was when we were 15 but when we were like a little older still it was like you know you kind of feel like you gotta you feel jealous i guess is what it is but yeah there's no reason to. there's no reason to because it is true that you know if you're not ready for it don't do it yeah and that's my advice for this episode that's right because we're yeah we're an advice we're an advice podcast, podcast. Yeah, what yes, are we band? are that was mike's advice corner <laughs> okay there we go <laughs> Kind of like a little bit like a triangle at the end of that, like ding. ding. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool, actually. We could make a make. I'll, I'll work on that. I'll make a song out of that. But uh, but, yeah, <laughs> but um, and so they have a heart to heart again with um, Corey and Sean. And they're like, you know, we gotta go to the police. We can't just you know keep you know taking yeah, her, you know yeah because like he asks he asks if uh, Claire can stay again, and you know basically you know saying, did you see what that jerk did to her arm? And you know basically saying that you know we're we're doing a great job of uh, of protecting. Claire one night at a time you know actually it's like come on guys and then she (laughs) she comes um over to the trailer I think and her she's all beat up her face is all bruised up Corey Corey brings her over there when she had come over to stay and you know it's because she was she had a black eye it was really a it was actually a really well done scene I think because she kind of comes out of the shadows and then you see the you you see the big uh bruises on her face and you're like oh yeah She's like, I'll just lie about it. And it turns out that her dad's the vice president of a bank, so he's got that good job thing going on for him, you know. Yeah. And so it's like, who are you gonna believe? You know, some trailer trash teenage boy who's doesn't don't even have his parents with him. He's just staying by himself. Are you gonna trust yourself to beat big city vice president of a bank? I don't know why I'm talking this way, but. <laughs> For, for 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 some reason he has like a southern accent and he's in Philadelphia. That's what I was um, thinking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, like Charlie from. But, but, but the thing is, is actually on this show, everybody has like a New York accent or a Philadelphia accent. And I mean, besides like the main characters, like like you get these people that come into the show and they have like a southern accent or, you know, usually the the like, quote unquote, poor people have southern accents. <laughs> of course. Like, yeah. like, 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 like Sean's parents are, you know, are southern for some reason. And they're in a trailer park in Philadelphia stereotypes yeah. um yeah classism right there um and which is kind of ironic because <laughs> there's like this stereotype of southern people being poor and therefore <laughs> you know their accent is automatically seen as being poor <clears throat> but it was the south that wanted the old slaves which the only people of the upper class would be able to own slaves <laughs> so it's just like how did that how did that weird and, transference of wealth take place well we'll, we'll learn about that next boy meets world episode and, 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 and uh, ling- linguistic linguistic linguistically and uh and, and speech wise the southern accent is actually closer to a british accent than a normal american accent so yeah i guess that makes sense uh and and and, and, and there's talk that m- most of the time the people in the united states like especially the southern people probably sound more like what George Washington and the ilk would have sounded like when they came over. So yeah, yeah. I, mean, I can see I can see that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. And so Corey and Sean are then trying to sneak her back into Corey's house, but this at this point Corey's parents figured out that he's been leaving. I guess. Or whatever during the middle of the night, <clears throat> and so they like explain to them what's going on, and they're like, and they "Yeah, found you gotta talk to the cops." Book. Yeah, they found was Claire's that? book. They oh, found Claire's started, book, yeah. and they're like, "Yeah," yeah it, and so they know who it was that was been staying the night. So yeah, like, damn it. And uh, Corey's dad makes a good point. He's like, "He's like, yeah, we're gonna get her a bus ticket so she can go to Vermont or whatever." And he's like, "His dad's like, distance isn't the thing that's going to keep her like being away from her dad." And like, they, 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 her off with her aunt because she had mentioned earlier that her oh yeah aunt had a nice nice house like Corey's yeah yeah and it's like um yeah because you're not gonna you know distance isn't gonna do that the the law will because you know what's yeah. to stop him from saying hey I need my kid back because if nobody knows anything's wrong of course the government's gonna be like hey you know and, and even even if his sister doesn't know you know <laughs> or his or his sister in law or whoever the aunt is you know so right it's like you can't just have like a, a missing person like a teenager just going from house to house for forever until she's like you know, yeah I'll be I'll be you know 18 in like two or three years like okay so for three yeah. years 
just going to be like she, she said she had a year and a half year and a half left of high school and then she would be okay. fine at one point yeah so you're going to be couch surfing for a year and a half before you know yeah like but she was afraid you know because he's again he's like mm-hmm. a vice president he's of he, yeah he's got connections and you know he could he could say sean be her because he's trailer trash or whatever you know yeah and sean and does so, uh, if criminal behavior so 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 basically then then the amy and, a- and alan uh drive uh sean and Corey to the police station to make a report about what was going on and then we find then, then there's a scene days later that Corey and topanga seem to have patched things up and are looking at photos that claire had sent them um and claire is very happy in Vermont with her aunt Vermont with her aunt and um <laughs> her father is uh is in counseling and re and, and a rehab center um and they yeah. hope the two can see each other again someday and then uh they talk about how things are in their relationship and then uh they start to kiss and then Topanga turns on the radio and that uh that kid song starts playing again but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Which, which oh yeah there was another there was another thing earlier where uh mr feeney way early in the episode um cory had thrown that cd out the window at the first time when he tried to seduce topanga and <laughs> yeah and, and i guess it went flying to mr feeney's living room so yeah yep so uh there's a little bit of uh i guess attached at the end of the episode when it originally aired there was a there was a uh clip of uh of uh, ben savage daniel official and Ryder strong delivering a public service announcement about reporting abuse it was replaced in syndication with an announcement of the national childhood abuse hotline delivered by Ryder strong at one point Corey mentions uh sean blowing up a mailbox with a cherry bomb oh. as well as him stealing turner's bike um a callback to seasons one, The Fugitive, in which uh, he does blow up a mailbox with, with a cherry bomb. And uh, then uh, season three is I Never Sang for My Legal Guardian, which uh, he he almost steals Turner's bike. He didn't totally, but yeah. Yeah. Ariana Richards, who plays Claire Ferguson in this episode, played Lex Murphy in Jurassic Park. However, Corey mentioned the movie in season three's Life Lessons, meaning the movie exists in the universe. So she was in that movie, but... um. So there's a there's a girl that looks exactly like her that was in the movie Jurassic Park. Uh oh, um, now we're getting some <laughs> can- yeah. canon now. Um, and then, then at one point when when Eric's telling his story about Mitchell Davis and the bike, he says he says that Mitchell Davis because he fell off his bike ended up repeating the sixth grade eleven times, which is mathematically impossible. As eleven years ago, Eric would have been seven. Yeah, and sixth graders tend to be eleven or twelve. So yeah, so that would mean that the kid trying to one up him was like five years older than he was. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, that seven year old could eat my dirt or what? Like you know, it's just like yeah. wow. Yeah, you're such a cool guy. I know when I was. When I was 11 or 12, I was like riding my bike around the neighborhood and being like, ha ha, you little seven year olds, you can't ride a bike like me. Piece of <laughs> shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. Go so back. it's 11 times. Back in your mom's womb, you baby. No. Yeah. So if it's 11 times and he's 12, meaning 12 plus 11, he would be 23. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you don't wonder having a 23 year old in the sixth grade uh, yes <laughs> i mean i mean it's not like that one show where the guy's 23 and a teacher which even that's kind of young you know um, yeah but still yeah uh what was that show that british show i forgot the name of it um, oh that uh bad education yeah, yeah. bad education yeah, yeah that's a good one um yeah oh my god any uh any other thoughts about this uh this episode of boy meets world no not really okay so uh yeah i mean i i liked it i thought it was good um like i said i will have you know for for you anybody that is listening and uh look in our show notes there will be some uh there will be a link to a place where you can uh get help if you know of anybody being abused in any way so yeah abuse is bad okay yeah yeah true mm-hmm. yep and uh yeah um and don't live with a dangerous secret folks don't don't do it uh yes and make sure you uh as i said before check out all 2 real com. check out our t public our uh patreon all of our social media and um as well as uh give us a five-star review wherever you can um share the show on um aforementioned uh social media um also you know you can uh just you know talk to people like if you're at a family gathering or something just be like hey listen to all too real too and then you know your your uncle joe will just look at you weird and be like what the hell are you talking about 
Uh, and then you'll be like, oh, it's a podcast. And then your Uncle Joel will be like, I don't even know what a podcast is. And then all of a sudden he'll go into some like conservative rant about something. And then you'll be like, right. okay, I told, her, I told the complete wrong person. So just learn from that, okay? Yeah. All these new <laughs> things, that, podcasts and... <laughs> Is that on the TikTok? Um, wait. <laughs> no, it's not on the TikTok. <laughs> they do have a TikTok, though. So check us out. We are on TikTok. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, just just share us with your friends. That'd be great. You know, it'd be better to share with your friends on Facebook or TikTok or uh, or um, the, the 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 X. Is that what they're calling it these days? Mm-hmm. Elon Musk's S X. No, I still call it Twitter because that's a way better name than X. So well, I think everything should just be called X. Because it's such a better name than anything that ever existed. It's such and, a unique and, and it, It's such a unique name. It's not like there hasn't been things like X Games and um, no. other things in the past, or the X Men, or um, anything that you know had better you know use of that letter. Um, so, or Malcolm X, or you know different things that yeah. were better uses of that name. Nope, not true. But yeah, we'll we'll take we'll take you know a really well-known um, social media app name and just change it to X, you know? I, I, I hear that next week, Coca-Cola is going to change its name to Y. Um, but, <laughs> Sure, I mean... It'd be, yeah. it'd be the same thing, you know? So the Ford Motor, Motor Company next week is going to change its name to Z. I mean, that's, let's just do it. Let's just, let's just, like, take away, like, hundreds of years of branding and just mm-hmm. flush it down the toilet and then <laughs> say, yay, this is your new life now. I mean, God, like, even, like, the X logo something Sometimes it looks like a porn site logo. And so it's like, because someone exactly. actually did, someone did a thing where they took the picture of the different logos of like various porn sites and they put Twitter's <laughs> one and they said, guess which one is, you know, <laughs> and like most it's, people couldn't get it. Like, you know. Yeah. It's so stupid. It's such, it's such a horrible name. But anyways, we all, we, we are, um, Cullen Park, at least, uh, is also on uh, Blue Sky and Threads. Those are other things that are similar to the stupid uh, X. And uh-huh. um, they have better names. Not necessarily that they're all great run companies either. They, right, you right. Know, in- Instagram and uh, Threads are both run by Meta. Mr. Z. Yeah. yeah. And Mr. Z. And um, Yeah, Mr. His, Z uh, is Mr. X. <laughs> and if you want to listen, there, there's a there's a podcast. I, I know I'm going off, off on this, but uh, there's a podcast, a recent episode of this podcast called Better Offline. It's all about the downfall of Facebook. Listen to oh. it. It's really good. And it, and it actually tells you how uh, basically since the beginning, uh, Mark Zuckerberg has been running that company into the ground because he doesn't really care about people. He just cares about money and um, yeah. metrics and not actually, you know, a social media experience. Experience, which explains why you know you know things like uh, you know rep, you know and, um, things like uh, you know people dying in other countries are allowed and um, you know racism is allowed on the site. Um, Donald Trump got elected in large part because of Facebook. So you know things things like that. So yeah. <laughs> Although some of that can be blamed on the dude from Napster, um, because he was the one that wanted to really put ads and stuff on Facebook, whereas Zuckerberg at first was like, "Yeah, eh, about that." You one know? of the main one of the main things it is also Sean Sean Fanning's uh um or Sean Parker um his his uh his uh fault too because he uh when he left at first when he joined the company as president he said that Mark Zuckerberg should have uh, two of the five seats on the board and then when he left he gave his seat to Mark Zuckerberg so like three of the five seats on the board of of uh, Meta are Mark Zuckerberg oh wow (laughs) so yeah yeah good times folks good times to be alive (laughs) but you know since we've gone way off topic here um let's get us back here to the fact that you know you love us we're one of the good things in the world (laughs) And, uh, you know, share our show and all that good stuff. Um, remember that I love you. Claire's dad probably loved her, but he didn't know how to show it. Uh-huh. He was really bad at it. And he, and, he, and he beat her. And don't beat your kids. Don't beat your kids. Yeah. Don't beat your kids. Do it's it. bad. Okay. Oh. And uh, Sesame loves you. I do. And until next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Hawes. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com.